The NHL has a Uri Slavkovsky problem. He just put on the most dominant performance of his career so far, notching a hat trick in a huge win against the Philadelphia Flyers. There is a ton that we have to break down in this game, but of course, we're going to be putting our main focus on Slavzilla himself, and while Dvorak and Gallagher also scored, I mean, hey, he is the man of the hour. We also got some other crazy news to talk about with you in this video. We got to talk a bit about Lane Hudson and his, some of his comments about joining the Montreal Canadiens, Arbor Jack Eye's unfortunate update, and Florian Jack Eye signing his entry-level contract. There is so much to discuss. Thank you all, 100 of you here already for this live edition of Habs Digest after the game. Give us a like. Are you guys pumped for Slavkovsky? Give us a like if you're pumped for Slavzilla. We are so thrilled. Push this to the top of the YouTube algorithm. We want everyone to see the hype that we have for Slavkovsky. First, Slavzilla, Jesse, I cannot believe what we just saw. I'm going to toss up the box score as always. Armia with setting a career high in goals. Of course, Anderson breaking the streak. Dvorak in his first game back from pectoral surgery. Two goals. Galley with two. But it's the man of the hour. It's Uri Slavkovsky, the second youngest player ever to get a hat trick for the Montreal Canadiens. Oh man, and the Selly to top it all off. I don't even know what to say. I am just beyond happy. This is just a historic night, you know, what a way to really kind of cap off the rest of the season, right? Not there at the end, but just you guys have cost. You are putting in all this work. This has to feel good. You're getting near the end of a long season, right? But, you know, to put in this type of performance where we're really seeing everything from them, you know, that first goal, we're seeing, you know, that tip, right? Matheson's getting all excited, celebrating, but he knows that's his goal, you know, and then we're seeing, but then the skill as well, like, that third goal for that hat trick, Josh, like how beautiful it is as we're seeing in the highlights there. Like just that skill, you know, just to really, again, you know, split the D, get on that breakaway, but just tuck it where basically the netminder has no chance whatsoever. So again, just doing a little bit of everything, which is exactly what we've come to expect from Satsuma. And I think he's come to expect that of himself. Of course, his goals in his first season, even the early goals this year, you saw him getting super, super excited after everything. And it makes a ton of sense, right? The dude's scoring in the NHL, but now he looks like he's been there before. He's on a breakaway. Yeah, no problem. Just the most calm of moves. No crazy fancy deke. Just put it over the blocker. That's all you need. And you know what? That's that's some Chad Kovsky stuff right there. Um, Yeah, I mean, this is just pure dominance and I think he could have had more goals he had some more chances in this game as well and of course of course coach Marty was not rubbing any salt in the wound he was keeping Suzuki's line off the ice for a while keeping Slav off the ice as the game went on a bit so it was just a uh, it was phenomenal but it wasn't even only the scoring there were some defensive plays too Jesse I thought like when Slav like now I feel like when he's going for these puck battles in the corner it's something that's developed this season his ability we, we complained about him having one hand on the stick too much but now he's using that to his advantage to chop at pucks from absurdly far away to knock him away from opposing players. I know we're all focusing on the offense, but my gosh, his defense is, is, is doing amazing as well. It's really that all around game, right? And again, he's just disrupting things every time when he's in the zone and basically, you know, just altering the play every time when he's out there and really with just the skill he's showing, it's so important because he's really going to start getting that, that respect that he really deserves even more, but that's just going to lead to increase even better play, right? Like, I see in the future a world where on the power play, Slavkovsky starts getting touches very much earlier on just because, you know, the team recognizing what a great playmaker he is. We can still have that defensive guy, you know, whether it's Matheson, maybe a Hudson in the future, which we'll kind of get to, you know, kind of quarterback. This doesn't mean that you can't have a guy like Slavkovsky getting touches early on and really kind of, you know, organizing the play there and setting it up. Cause I honestly think the quicker that we can get him involved in a lot of these plays, the better it is just for the overall team. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just, I, I, it's unbelievable what we're seeing. I'm seeing some comments here, Jesse, someone saying, wouldn't be surprised to see Suzuki, Slavkovsky, Caulfield put up a 90 goal combined season next year. I don't think that's that crazy either for them to all combine. Maybe one of them, a couple of them get 35 Slav gets another 30. It, it's not the craziest thing I've ever heard. There's a lot, there's a lot of fantastic comments here. Let me, let me just take a look there. See people pumped about Florian. Uh, yes, the stream is just starting. Um, let's see what else we have. Everything but a shutout from Monty. That that's true. Jason Patrick says, guys, I have to say that this is bigger than Slafzilla. We've witnessed the birth of Slaf Mania on the heels of WrestleMania. What's the NHL yes. going to do when Love Slaf Mania it. runs wild on you, brother? Your eyes, Slaf Goss. Oh my gosh, I need to get that done. I already got this. What We're it gonna... is. I'm going to make another one. I need to shave in the handlebar mustache 
Um, yeah, I mean, th that yes. might be it. That might be the next thing. You might have just given us an, an idea. Um, leave us some comments about Slav. I know everyone's coming in to talk about Slav, so we might as well run the highlight reel again. Why not? This is first goal. We also posted uh, this highlight reel on the channel to some music with a nice little beat drop on his hat trick goal. So if you want to go check that out on the channel, feel free to do so. But just figured anyone that's just joining the stream, 211 of you. Guys, 211 of you, we can get those like numbers up. We're at 47. I know I ask all the time, but as you guys know, it helps us and it helps fellow Habs fans find us sooner. This is going to be posted as a video after. We want all of them to be able to find us. So if you guys could show us some support, hit that like. We'd really appreciate it. And if you haven't hit subscribe, you need to hit subscribe to chat in the chat right now. Um, Jesse, I know Slav, if we get some more comments or some super chats, we'll talk a bit more about Slav. But I wanted to transition a bit to the other guys. Anderson breaking his streak. Yoel Armia setting another career high in goals. These are some stories that are easily going to get slept under the rug, but I just wanted to give these guys their flowers for right now. Um, I thought they played great games. Anderson doing what he does best. He hasn't had a drive to the net like that in a while, it feels like. And he was rewarded with one of the greasiest goals I've ever seen. But you got to think it feels great for him. Yeah, that's how you want to finish the season off, right? You're just looking at it on that positive note. And you have to feel like Josh Anderson kind of learned as the game went on because he had a couple opportunities where he's driving, but... Instead of taking the net, he's like, okay, let me kind of wheel around the net. And just nothing would kind of happen to play. So he's like, okay, let's just go back, you know, to, to what I do best, going towards the net. And I think that's what Josh Anderson has to do. He has to keep his game simple, and he can be so effective by doing so. That was the most Josh Anderson goal ever, just kind of taking it to the net. And it's just like the delayed reaction, like, oh, yeah, it went in, right? But that's where the good things happen. That's where all the opportunities happen. As we see from Slav setting that tone with the first goal, those good things happen in front of the net, right? That's where those type of balance, bounces happen, right? So really happy to see that, you know? And and also, you know, some feel-good stories, obviously, for, for Armia as well, right? Just keeping that going now, a career high, um, you know, as humble as ever, right? But this has to feel so good for him, for having been sent down to the Laval Rocket twice and then also have your career high in goals in the same year, like, what a year of ups and downs it's been. Just an emotional roller coaster. But, I mean, it's a testament to him to just to keep his cool, right? Kind of through it. Bring that, that you know, workman-like attitude just to, you know, to the arena every day, right? So, very, very good to see him rewarded as well. Yeah, that's a skill in and of itself to be able to push through, like, kind of tough times like that when you get sent down and you question everything. Unbelievable. Um, I, Before we move on to the other stuff, this is going to be a short stream, guys. You guys asked for the stream, saw some comments, saw some tweets at us asking for the stream. That's why we're here giving this to you guys. So, thank you all for suggesting that we do this stream. Um, I, I wanted to mention Christian Dvorak. Of course, we thought he'd be out for the season. He comes in and he scores two goals. Is it a coincidence? Coincidence that the Habs' best game of the season is with Christian Dvorak back in the lineup? Yeah, but it's still really cool, you know, all the same. So shout out to Christian Dvorak. But Jesse, we got other stuff we got to talk about. There's so much that went down in this game. We got to talk about Florian Jack I. And as we tweeted out earlier, the Habs, they, well, they offered him his entry level contract. Now, in yesterday's stream, we actually discussed the possibility of them doing this. The options were an amateur tryout potentially with Laval, leading to an ELC this summer, similar to what they did with Joshua Wah. But the Habs decided to reward him, reward his incredible season in the OHL with 34 goals. And he was the best player on that Brantford Bulldogs playoff team. They rewarded him with an entry-level contract. And he's now in a professional tryout with Laval. And he can play right away. Jesse, we thought he would probably play with Laval this year. But now it's seeming like basically a lock that he plays with Laval next year. They could send him back to the OHL. But he would be an overager. And the OHL only allows, I think it's three overagers per team. I, I doubt the Habs would do that. Again, I feel like they see him better served in Laval but to see that ELC today was something I didn't really expect was something that you know made me super super happy especially with the unfortunate Arbor Jack I news that we'll get into in just a bit yeah it's definitely a big compliment to him and you have to feel that he is very highly valued by the organization and that's why they're kind of doing this so amazing to see that he's going to be able to get into action really soon right and for me I'm a big fan of these type of players you know especially I find like there's small little things in the game that sometimes get a uh, kind of understated, like the ability to go to the opposition, the front of their net, mm -hmm. kind of those, those dirty areas after the whistles. Those are sometimes important, just establishing your, your presence in a game, right? And just letting them know they're going to go to those dirty areas. If you never fight for those areas, you know, during the whistle and sometimes after as well, it's really hard for you to win, right? And unless you have players like Florian Jacka, you, you can't do that. And it's not every player that's really willing to do this. So really looking forward to see what he first contributes to Laval Rocket. But I think at this point, we have every reason to be very optimistic. And really, we got to keep, you know, monitoring 
his progression very closely here. Yeah, when they picked him, like you look at a guy with probably bottom six upside, and if he develops into that, it's just amazing. And if he gets even better, yeah, that's just gravy on top, right? Right now, we're not expecting him to absolutely dominate the AHL. In fact, I'm actually projecting there to be quite a learning curve for Florian. I think he'll be quite physical. I think he'll get a lot of penalty minutes. I don't think he'll get a lot of points straight away in Laval. It's a different game when you're uh, when you know, you're a 19, 20 year old who's six foot four in the OHL versus that same size, same age in the AHL. It's not often an easy transition for guys who play like him, but that doesn't mean he won't adapt. The Jack guys always adapt, and I'm really excited to see what he does. Um, Jesse, let's say Florian, we're, we're talking three years now, right at the end of his ELC. Do you see Do you see him being on the Habs in that bottom six? I'm just, just for the fans. I'd like to hear from the fans as well. Leave us a comment. Will Florian be on the Habs roster within the next three to four years? I'm saying he'll at least have one game under his belt in that bottom six. I'd like to say probably a few more, but I'm going to hold my reservations out and say, yes, he'll play a couple games, but I don't think he'll be a full-time roster member until maybe a little further down the line. I have to believe that he has the opportunity to definitely be a full-time member I within that time frame. I love it. Um, just not only for his work effort, but also he's got a shot that's as greasy as his stash, right? <laughs> so the fact that it's like when you can have that energy, but you can also – contribute you know that offensive skill is there we can't forget this with florian you know he did everything within his power to really show us this this year and now that's up for him to really continue that but i think you know we got every reason to not bet against the jack guy right now yeah that's fair it's it's unbelievable what he's been doing so so thrilled for him i mean you never know what he could do at the nhl level that these kind of games are like his kind of game is really hard to project right especially with a guy with who will probably have an atypical development curve which is something we're seeing a lot more now with prospects that kind of had a couple of years delayed due to the covid seasons and stuff but with a guy like Arbor, who was very much a late bloomer, the same thing could happen to Florian. Maybe this is just the beginning of him starting to climb that mountain and his peak is going to be way better than this. We don't know. I'm seeing a lot of comments saying that they believe Florian is definitely going to be on the Habs. Oh yeah, Florian's going to be the fourth liner. He's a lot like his brother. They're both hockey players who fight, not fighters who play a little hockey. Love that. I think that's very, very true. Super excited for Florian. And uh, well, you know, it contrasts very much with the Arbor uh, news that we got today, Jesse, Arbor Jack guy, that I, I'm still so upset at the Tampa Bay Lightning for this. Mike, Michael A. Simon cannot believe this happened. Arbor Jack guy who had nothing to do with the play, got dragged into a scrap with Michael A. Simon, injured his shoulder, and will now be out for the season. He's going to undergo a shoulder procedure with the same doctor that did Cole Caulfield and Josh Anderson's surgeries. So I guess that's good news or maybe bad news if, you, if you're, uh, you know, not a huge Josh Anderson fan. But at the same time, it sucks to see, especially in the circumstances. I guess it was mitigated by his brother signing his ELC, but I just, I wanted to see Jack in the last two games of the season, Jesse. Now, that's two shoulder surgeries within a couple of years for him, and that's not the same shoulder twice. It's both different shoulders. Are you concerned at all for him in the future? Because his shot, I guess, is a decent part of his game, his hard shot, but I feel like I'm not concerned just because these shoulder surgeries now typically turn into your shoulder being stronger than before, but I have to say I am a little disappointed. Yeah, for sure, you know, but I'm not worried about his future at all. I feel like he's a really tough guy, right? So if there's anybody that's going to be able to pull through, it's going to be him, you know? So a little bit unfortunate, but, you know, only with only a couple games left, you definitely have to consider this whole season as a whole a huge success for Arbor Jack guy. Mm -hmm. And this wasn't easy, right? He was sent down to the AHL. He, he had his stint, which I'm sure at the first he wasn't too happy about, but he didn't ever respond like a champ, right? And just come back kind of better than ever. So not only this season has he established himself as an NHL player, which is huge, but also as a very valued member of this team, the type of player that we need and that, that we want him to be, right? So not only is his progression so big for him, but I think for this whole team, just for the element that he brings, he's so beloved, you know, by our very knowledgeable ho hockey fans for a big reason, right? So this guy brings a lot to the game. It's the good news is, is that he should be ready for the start of next mm -hmm. season. So, I mean, I can't wait to see his progression continue here. Yeah, same here. But, hey, you know what? The start of next season, I think there's going to be some more competition on that blue line. And with Arbor Jack guy out for the season, for sure, there's only, what, four games left now, right? 78 games in, Slav with 19 goals. I got to get him to hit 20. Sorry, I'm still focused on Slav. There's another Habs defenseman who's looking to make his way into the lineup. And, hey, Gooley's still injured, too. We don't know, I believe, how long he's going to be out for, unless I missed that. Someone let me know if we did get a Gooley update. I don't think we did but uh, if you saw one let me know but that's lane hudson and uh, in a recent interview with the nhl.com 
they were talking to Lane Hudson and something Lane said, oh, well, he said this in English, but their articles in French is what it is. He said, I don't want to look too far into the future. He's putting his concentration and his energy on the Boston University Terriers and the Frozen Four. Of course, that's coming up in just a few days, guys. We are so excited to see what Lane Hudson and Jacob Fowler can do. But when the season ends, I'll look at my options. But yes, there's nothing that's impossible. I wouldn't say no to finishing the season with the Canadians. We will see. I would love this, Jesse. I mean, look, he's been saying this for the past, what, year now? Maybe more that he would love to play with the Canadians when that opportunity arises. I think that opportunity is going to arise this season. And with Gooley injured, with Jack High injured, what better time than now to slot Lane Hudson in for however many games he gets with the Habs? If it's one, if it's two, depending excuse me, when Boston University is eliminated from the Frozen Four, or hey, even if they win, I just really want to see him. I, I think this is just a golden opportunity to test the waters. I know it'll be just a tiny sample, just like we got with Sean Farrell, just like that one game sample we got from Owen Beck, but it's enough to tease us and get us really, really excited for training camp. Yeah, whether it's one game, half a game, we just need to get him in the organization as quick as possible, right? But I honestly wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being just kind of the one game sort of thing like that. Just still be happy with just because I believe him, you know, this type of player now with the added experience of now the second year playing in the Frozen Four, that very good team with Mac and Celebrini. It's like they could definitely make a run of it there, you know, but I think whatever we get, as long as we're seeing him to have this jersey, you know, by the end of this year, I think it'll be absolutely amazing. I'm so stoked for it, Josh. Like, you know, like I'm not saying he's going to score a Hattie on his first night, you know, but it's like I'm not, you know, I'm not You're saying not, he's not, not going to do that. something. Like, I'm not not saying it, you know, because this guy's electric. He's dynamic. He's like a Subban type. Okay, maybe without the hitting. Well, like, imagine later I can just poke in somebody. But, like, but other than that, like, the type of guy that can just change a game, right? Just take it over. And I think, you know, the, like, Matheson, obviously, is a great defenseman. But, you know, there's just something, I think, with the electric sort of dynamic play of Lane Hudson that we haven't quite seen since Subban. And we're going to start seeing that. With Hudson, so that's just why I'm so excited to see him. You know, should be really soon, but you know he's ready to go. His full concentration is on finishing his NCAA career in style. Yeah, 100%. And, I, I, you know, I get that that's where he's going to focus his efforts. And it makes a ton of sense. But you got to think in the back of his mind, even these games might be a slight tryout for the Montreal Canadiens. And he's going to get a game no matter what. It is what it is. But I'm just so excited to see what happens in the in the coming days. Because uh, not only are we going to see some of the top hockey I mean, other than the NHL, this NCAA tournament, some of the best hockey you could ever watch. We're also looking at the future of the Montreal Canadiens in this tournament. I think you're right. I think he can make an immediate impact if given the opportunity. And even if he doesn't play with the Habs next year, he can be playing in Laval with David Reinbacher and some other guys like Logan Mayu. We don't know. Justin Barron, whoever there is. Um, but yeah, it's going to be amazing. We're going to have one last look at the chat before we end off the stream, guys. This is a short one. I know post game you guys asked for. We delivered. We can't do a very long one tonight. It's late for us. But uh, hey, I'm going to take a look. Um, let's see here. Gooley day-to-day -day practicing in a non-contact jersey. That's good to hear. I actually didn't read that today. Um, there was an ad. Yeah, sorry. YouTube places ads occasionally throughout the live stream. So I'm sorry if you guys missed something due to the ads popping up. Um, but I also wanted to say thank you guys. We got over a hundred likes. And if anyone's here that hasn't hit like or hasn't hit subscribe and you enjoy the content we have here, give a like, give a subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, Jesse, any final thoughts on this before we sign off on this amazing Slap centric episode? We're live, baby. I love doing these lives after the shows. You know, definitely everybody feel free to come in, you know, on the Mondays at 6.15. We love going live. We love doing this show with you guys, you know, so always lots of fun. That's right. Every Monday, 6.15 p.m. Eastern, we go live. Next Monday will be a pregame live because the Habs play a rare Monday game versus the Detroit Red Wings. And it's going to be very interesting. But thank you all for coming into the live again. Sorry we couldn't get to every comment. We get a lot of comments in these. So, uh, oh, well, Jesse, as I was about to say, if you send a super chat or if you are a channel member, we will answer your stuff in priority. But we got oh. John Raymond, his third super chat ever. Thank you so much, John, for the super thank chat. You. Thank you for celebrating with us. Do you think a Canadian team could win the cup this year? Or does the drought continue? I guess that's going to be our final thoughts, Jesse. I, I think a Canadian team can. And I think... If there's any team, it's the Vancouver Canucks. I think this season they've caught lightning in a bottle. I don't know if it's going to continue next year. Don't know if JT Miller's going to decline. Don't know what's going to go on. I think this is the year that they have to do it if they want to do it. I think Demko is playing amazing, amazing hockey. Even to Smith for them has been good. It would also be like hilarious if the Jets, after having years of just being meh, 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 just stumble their way to a cup. But I think, I think Vancouver got the best shot. Jesse, what about you? 
I hear where you're coming from with that. But on the other hand, I feel like the Jets are just a team that I could see doing very well I know. in the playoffs. There's something about Halibut, you know, and everything else. Obviously, I want to see the Oilers do well. Um, it would be amazing to see them go on a big run. I'm going to be rooting for them for sure as a as a Canadian team. Basically, all of our Canadian teams probably, except for the Leafs. They got yeah. to prove it to me first. You know, but yeah, no, definitely. Like, I just something about the Jets, right? I think you know what that that sort of playoff style of hockey. I can see them thrive in there. So definitely going to be keeping close on them. But of course, Vancouver's got tons of skill. It's going to be amazing to watch, and Edmonton as well, right? That's just going to be entertaining hockey. I can't wait to watch that. Yeah, watching what McDavid can do in the playoffs along with Drysaddle. It's going to be fantastic, amazing stuff. And if you guys want us to talk about other playoff teams on the channel, if you want us to do like live watch alongs or something for another playoff game, it's not something I've really thought of. But hey, it's had success for some other channels. Let us know if there's any team that you guys like. Maybe it's Vancouver. Maybe it's Edmonton. We'd just love to hear from you. Leave it in the comment in this after this comes down. Because for right now, unfortunately, that's going to have to do it for this episode of Habs Digest. Thank you so much to every single one of you that tuned in for this impromptu live stream. We really, really appreciate you. Uh... I was about to end it. But Jesse. But Jesse, we got another super chat. We got another oh. super chat. Can't let this live pass without rem reminding you all that I am fan number one. Keep it up, guys. Oh, Angie, 10th super chat, $10 <laughs> in the 10th super chat. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you can't let the live go by without Angie's donation. Thank you so, so much. Stopping us from ending the stream. Really appreciate you so, so much. And, hey, you know what? It's it's the fans like you guys that make these things possible, right? Like, who, who would ever thought? We're just I'm just there on, on Twitter. We're just looking through YouTube. And some people are like, hey, what about a live? All right, you know, we try it and look at all the people that turned out. We had two, 250 plus people at like 10, 15 p.m. on a Tuesday night coming to watch us talk about Slavkovsky and some other halves news, guys. This is unbelievable stuff. I mean, I, I don't even know what else to say except for thank you. Any parting thoughts from the chat? Leave it there. I, I don't even, I already did the outro. So what do we do? Do we just end the stream like randomly? Do we just leave them? Do we just <laughs> leave the fans in a state of suspense? I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. What, what do you guys suggest? We're, we're here like have stream like, I, I don't know, after the end. Because like, you know, I, I don't know, the people who are clicking on the YouTube video have already probably clicked away, right? Well, Danny Abbott just got here. I'm sorry, Danny. This is going to go up as a video after. I mean, you know, just leave abruptly mid-sentence. You know, that would be pretty funny, right? If we just if we just did that and we just, you know, we just cut to black or something. Oh, I put myself on solo. That's not what I meant to do. There you go. Look at that. There you go. We're just getting some, 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 just shut it off. Yeah. You know what? That might not be.